Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mikey intern Ned Reynolds back in the studio on a Monday morning. So the Kansas City Chiefs headed west to face off with the San Francisco 49ers in the what they call America's Game of the Week, which was <laughs> nice to see. It was the first time they'd played since the Super Bowl. They called it National Tight End Day because, of course, they had Travis Kelsey going against Kittle, and uh, Chiefs showed up big time. You know, even when they were down 10 nothing early in the game, never did I have a doubt that they were going to come back, and I don't think the Chiefs did either. And immediately within that happening, they, they're up 10, to, they're down 10-7, to 7, and then they're scoring and finally get a lead of 14-13 in that ball game and never looked back. Why? Because they have speed. That's the one item that Kansas City has that the other teams, almost all the others in the National Football League, do not have, and that is quickness on both offense and defense, and they can do so many things. And they have Patrick Mahomes. All he was yesterday was 25 of 34 for 423 yards and two, uh, three touchdowns, three TDs that he had in this game, three passing touchdowns. The Chiefs' defense, I tell you what, they even big old Chris Jones in there, they can double and triple team that guy, and all that does is leave the room open for the linebackers to get in and give the QB. Garoppolo never had a chance. He was sacked yesterday five times. Five times he found himself on his derriere, two of them by Chris Jones alone. And that that, that really, I think, is the measure of how Kansas City is winning. They're taking other teams out of their offensive rhythm and their pattern, and they're doing it with that disruptive defense. I've got to give the Chiefs defense credit. Now, defensive backfield... Still needs a little tightening, but heaven's sake, when the quarterback can't get the ball out there, that's not going to make any difference at all. Even the running game, and uh, San Francisco did uh, (laughs) employ number 23 coming in there, having come over from the Carolina Panthers, McCaffrey, and he's a pretty good athlete. He's going to help them, and that's against the Midland teams. And by Midland, I'm talking about not middle country. Midland is in excellent to Midland. Well, the fact is that Kansas City is just a really superior football team, and I think they played very, very, very well. Mahomes unstoppable yesterday. San Francisco is not all that bad a football best team. De- up until yesterday, best defense in the league. They were the best defense, and they were shelled yesterday. Now, they have a lot of injuries, but still, that's this is pro football, and you expect that depth to come to the fore, and... Kansas City exploited it in every way. I was really pleased. That was a complete game that they played. Hell yeah, it was. Except for one thing I want to bring up right now. If I see Sky Moore back there to return a punt again, I'm going to lose my mind. That's two (laughs) that he's messed up. Cost us the game against the Colts. I, you know, like, I I mean, I I get it. You give a guy a chance, you give a guy a chance. But, I mean, after two, do you think they put him back there to return again? I would be surprised if they do. He hasn't learned yet how to take a punt in pro football. Now, in central Michigan, central, I think, is where he came from. You can get away with that, reaching the ball and, and trying to get it on a you know a circus catch and things like that, but not in the NFL. You don't do that sort of thing. Back away. Run away from it. Yeah, you may put your team in pretty deep uh, offensive position, but by the same token, you're not going to fumble it and do, you know, come on, Sky, use your head. The special teams do need some work, but that's just a very small facet of it. It, it didn't cost them the game, cost them the lead, but you knew Kansas City was going to come back. They're just too good a football team. Gosh, when <laughs> when Mahomes rolled out to his right, he looks for his secondary and maybe third receiver in McCole Hardman, and he scores a touchdown. What on earth is this? First receiver in the Super Bowl era to get two rushing touchdowns and a receiving touchdown in the game. I just wish they would quit the circus performing in the end zone. <laughs> oh, come on. Thanks. All right, the other thing I want to talk about, that it was great they were targeting Chavarius Ward, who's now 49er, used to be a chief. They were on him all day. But I wanted to do this uh, just so you can hear it, and I wanted to get your reaction. Did you hear what Frank Clark said after the win? You want to hear it live? Okay, hold on. <laughs> You know what I mean? We're playing the 49ers we're in, they, in that area. We just lost last week. So if we had any type of with the job done again, that's what happened. We beat their ass and they stayed it. They talked all that and you see what happened. You know, we still stepping on them. Uh, two years later, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, so you know how I'm in. Real Frank Clark fashion. Frank, real. 
<laughs> Frank. <laughs> You're trying the media, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to have to use the beeps a few times in that one. <laughs> I just thought it was hilarious. It's like three sentences. Oh, God. But yeah, it was good. It was really, really good to see them uh, to get a win like that in San Francisco. And uh, especially going into the bye week. Um, they need the rest. Uh, everyone seems pretty healthy, too. What's interesting about Clark is he's a University of Michigan guy. Mm-hmm. That's one of the top academic universities in America. Talking like that? <laughs> hey, man. Frank. He might understand calculus and trig, and we don't, so. <laughs> <laughs> got seven days left, Ned. Seven days. What are you going to be for Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> dress up like Mike the intern. Oh, what the? <laughs> Flip-flops, cut-offs, no, <laughs> no sleeves. We'll and, have to get you some of those uh, fake tattoo arm dye things. dye my hair black and <laughs> dye my beard black and all that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, if you get arrested that night, it's not my problem. That's your problem. You shouldn't have been pretending to be me in the first place. All right. Big congratulations. I know Ned is as neutral as it comes, but they are your boyhood team. And the Phillies are going to the series. We'll not deny that. Yeah, that was the team that I rooted for. Like I told the guys yesterday, the core teams of the Philadelphia sports public are the Phillies and the Eagles. The others, 76ers, relative speaking, newcomers, Philadelphia Flyers came into existence after I was gone from there. So there's little identification. But Eagles and Phillies, yeah, they were the, they were the basic Philadelphia sports scene and have been. So to see a team that has long struggled come back and get into the World Series, although I'm going to tell you, I'm not sure they belong there. They are the sixth and final team to qualify for the playoffs. They were number six in the National League, last. They were the last team in both leagues to qualify. But they did. That's under the new system. And who knows, there may be more wild cards coming in. Major League Baseball likes that TV money, and I don't. Uh, it's not that I don't like money, but I don't like the format that's being used with extra teams getting in. Talked about it yesterday, the Dodgers and the Braves, two of the best records, gone so. They never even made the second round of the playoffs. But the fact is that Philadelphia is hot. They're playing very, very well. They'll play the Astros in the World Series beginning on Friday. The Astros should be there. They, this is the fourth time in the last six years they they've been New to the York World Series. Awful. They are a very, very good baseball team. And they're a combination of young people and uh, the veteran pros, the Jose Altuve's and people of that caliber who are in there. In fact, <laughs> on Friday when the World Series opens, they're going to start Justin Verlander, who is still around, still pitching, and may be the Cy Young Award winner in the Could American be. League this yeah. year. That's one thing that Houston has, is a very deep baseball team. It'll be a good series. I think the Astros probably win it. They have home field advantage, and they should. They have the best record. But the one thing that we may see in this World Series, and this will, (laughs) even you may not be a deep, deeply rooted baseball fan, but there probably is going to be a lot of hitting. I'll tell you why. Both stadiums, Minute Maid Park in Houston and Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia, are, are what's known in baseball as band boxes. Their, their regulation distances and all that, but they're built for hitting. There's a lot of home runs hit. You saw Bryce Harper hit one yesterday to the opposite field. In Houston, that really happens more than it does mm-hmm. in Philly with the big facade that they have in left field and the train that runs on the top of it. It's, it's really kind of a circus in a way. But indeed, I think the Houston Astros and the Phillies will be a pretty good series. I think Houston will win it. Should be a lot of fun, but I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. This season is way too long. I know this is an anomaly this year because of the wobbly way the campaign started, but still, playing baseball in November is not right. It's going to be tough, especially going on to the East Coast, but uh, it's been warm, so we well, might in, be able to eke Houston's it out. In Houston's case, Houston is in south-central Texas where it's usually yeah. warm, and it's on the coast. So they'll be all right. But their stadium is also enclosed if they have to. There'll be a roof. Not in Philadelphia, not at Citizens Bank Park. Great stadium and all that, but it is wide open. And this time of the year, anything can happen. Yep. Uh, Hopefully they can hold on to a few warm nights until it flips on us again. All right. So football bears had to win on the road, had to make a statement. They didn't get the message. You know, I'm totally baffled. I do not understand this at all. They have not won since the Arkansas game. Like and that was six weeks ago. 
It's almost like they left it on the field in that game. I, I, I just can't believe a Bobby Petrino team would do this. This is a team that has some good players on it. They're, they're out of the playoffs now. They'll never see the light of day in the playoffs. And I think that was probably the case when they lost last week as well. But maybe an ember of hope, but, but not now. You go up to Northern Iowa, and this has been a house of horrors for the years, or for the Bears over the course of years. And it was this weekend, 41-20, to to a team that really isn't all that good. And yet the Bears' defense, I don't know what's happened to him. Jason Shelley, the quarterback who's a fine player, sacked five times in this game. The Bears didn't get any sacks on Northern Iowa's quarterback. And you can't have this. Offensive line just isn't playing well at all. Northern Iowa had almost twice as many total yards in this game as the Bears did. And that's the Bears are an offensive football team. I do not understand what is happening. They're not cohesive. They are not together. Now, this weekend, they have homecoming here in town, and they probably will win that game. But (laughs) whereas about six weeks ago, I would have said, well, this is a big win for them. Western Illinois is really poor. But now I'm not so sure. Western Illinois, the Bears aren't very good. I I don't understand what's happened. And I think Coach Petrino and his staff and the players have to be consulting among themselves. I'm not a believer, Mike, in teams tanking. I, I don't believe that happens at all. Subconsciously, however, we've all been through down periods, Mm -hmm. and you know how subconsciously that can work against you. I'm hoping that hasn't happened, but I'm wondering if it's not the case. Well, it really sucks because you, you've got a quarterback who's extremely talented, and this is it with him after this season, right? We're He's done. Gone. He's gone. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Shelley is a, it has been a game changer for the team, and it really sucks because now you've got to you – the, the season's just going to play itself out, and that's it. Nothing you can do about it. Um, but uh, it's unfortunate, and hopefully they can uh, correct the shit. But, yeah, he you can kind of tell they were – getting by with that O-line early on in the season, and that was going to be one of the problems they were going to have because he was running for his life, even in the games they were winning. So, I, you know, it sucks in that. you got to protect your guy. you got to protect your boy. So, will there be any uh, local games when the high school district football player playoffs begin uh, this, this is, weekend? Yeah, this is week number 10, and this is the beginning of district playoffs. One loss, and it's sayonara. You're out of there. Your season's come to an end. Uh, because we're lacking here on time, I'm going to talk about the games that will be here in town and in this immediate area. And your alma mater, Kickapoo, will play here in town against Lee's Summit West. That'll be a very good game. Ozark and Nixa. Wait a minute, they played last week. Yep, they're playing again. <laughs> I have to understand the teams in district play are all seeded. And Nix is number one seed. Ozark is number eight seed, last place. So they played last set or last Friday, I should say, in Ozark. And Nix won 51 to 7, I think, the final. They play again this week in Nix. Ooh, boy. Anyway, and Rolla will play Glendale at a Glendale High School. And here's one that is, that hasn't happened in many years. Springfield Central will play a home game. They're playing Waynesville. And this is the first round of District Central, which has been just, just had really dismal years over the, really the last 10, 15, 20 years. They have come on and they're playing very, very well. They'll be at home as well. So there are a number of games. We'll talk more about them as the week goes on, but it's a big time for high school football because it's one and done if you lose. Which one are you going to go watch this weekend? Probably the Kickapoo game, but I don't know that for sure. We'll have maybe one on the broadcast, but hey, it, it remains to be seen. All right. Well, you got to let me know either way. Better let me know what you're going to be for Halloween. You can't be me. You gotta, I'm you Mike the be, Intern. Oh, God. <laughs> Ned, have a great day, sir. I'll see you tomorrow.